Welcome to this last part of chapter 1. In this part, we'll be discussing a new concept. It's called viscosity. You should have covered this in previous courses, more specifically in fluid power, uh, MET to theory. But we will be looking into more details in this course or in this chapter. So viscosity, let's first put a definition and after that we're going to attack the this definition with more illustrations and more examples. So the way this concept is we might think of sorry select the pen here and then the way it is defined is have resistance is the fluid due to an external force. So, so you might think of you have a fluid and you have those two balls that you, those two beakers and each one has a different uh, liquid. For example, here we have uh, some kind of oil and that's heavier than water and you drop two balls, one is here and one is here, and if both are dropped at the same initial velocity, we expect the one with uh, the lighter one, we call it lighter, to, to, uh, to have the ball reaching its, bo its bottom at, uh, at a faster rate than the other that have heavier oil. The same thing we can see here for the different types of automotive oil. So if you have SAE 20, 30, 40, up to 50, and you drop four balls in each, uh, one in each beaker at the same time, we expect the ones, uh, the lower ones, or the, the lower, vis uh, the, let's put it, the lighter viscosities, or the lighter oil, uh, to have the balls reaching their bottoms at a faster rate than the heavier ones. So this term, lighter and heavier, is actually related to the viscosity. So you might have... Uh, so we in, in these examples we have the ball dropping into the fluid and then you have oil or the fluid it would be exerting some kind of force how strong the resistance of the uh, fluid on the ball will actually define the viscosity okay So the smaller the viscosity is, the lighter the oil will be, or vice versa, if, if the oil is light, so it means it has a smaller viscosity number, and if it's heavy or if it's large, then it means it has a large viscosity and it's going to be heavier. Another way to look into these examples is by considering, uh, is by looking into uh, this very famous example where you have two plates, a lower plate and an upper plate. But before we start with this, let's look into, for example, a solid piece. like this so this is solid and let's assume this surface is fixed and then we apply a force at the top surface so what would happen as 
at this. If it's fixed, it's going to tilt all together like that. And with an angle, either we consider it with the reference vertical line or with the uh, reference horizontal line. But this angle basically remains the same because it's a solid. So if no buckling or deflection or something happens, so all of it will be tilted in this direction. So what do you expect would happen if we do the same in this example where we have two plates as we can see here the lower one let's assume it's fixed and then we apply a force f so this one is also a force we apply a force on the upper plate what do you expect to happen? Is the fluid actually gonna tilt as this happen as this phenomena here or not? It's actually no, because uh, since this is fluid and this is property of the fluid, uh, this will be moving with velocity v, for example, because of this force. And then what they noticed is that. The velocity profile is going to diminish till it reaches down to zero by the stationary surface. And by chance, actually, it came as parabolic. But that's actually the more common way. And the more special way is to have the velocity profile. So these are velocity profiles. So this plate moves, this plate, the lower one, it's stationary. And then this will move with a velocity v. And the velocity profile, actually, it's plotting the magnitude of the velocity in the vertical line. So this is v, this is uh, v, so let's say this is v1, this is v2, v3 v4 etc all the way till it reaches v at the bottom so i'm gonna call this one vu which is v or vt so v upper v lower etc but you can see that the velocity is decreasing as we move so the velocity decreases as we move away from the moving plate to the stationary one or to the fixed one and that's basically coming from the effect of viscosity So we have layers of water or the fluid here, and actually it acts against this velocity, okay, till it, diminish, it diminishes all the uh, effect or the force so that we would see no velocity of the fluid by this plate. And this actually is represented as tau equal mu dv by dy assuming that this is the x direction and this is the y direction where tau is anyone knows from the strength material so tau is the shearing the shear stress and it's actually defined as force by area of the shear where the shearing force is happening and this is force, the shear force okay mu is called the dynamic 
viscosity. And it has the units of Newton second per meter squared or pound second per foot square. This year it's, uh, it can be Newton per meter square or it can be pound per foot square or it can be actually sometimes PSI here in English and it's, it's more common to have a PSI so it's pound per inch square and this one can be in megapascal. If you don't remember, I'm going to give a very short relation between megapascal and newton per meter square. So megapascal is actually 10 to the 6 pascals, this is mega, and that's going to be 10, 1 times 10 to the 6 newton per meter square, or it is newton per millimeter squared, right? Because this one is 10 to the 6 millimeter square, so megapascal is actually newton per millimeter square. So anytime we can substitute the units to be in newton and millimeter square, the stress is, gonna, is going to be in megapascal. We'll see that in the in more details in the example. Now dv is, oh, this is missing an area here, so it's the shearing. Uh, well, it depends on the units. I'm kind of just saying no. Okay, I need to switch back to the pen. Okay. So this would be mu, the dynamic viscosity. Then here, what we have is actually V. Well, it's delta V, it's, since I put V2 there, so I'm going to just make it general. Then we can, we can make some cases out of that. So it's delta V by delta Y. So it's the change in velocity over the same corresponding change in distance. So this would be, for example, mu, now if we look there, we have V upper minus the lower one at the bottom, so VB divided by the whole distance here. So we're going to have to define that. So if this is zero, then we have Y1, Y2, Y3, etc. And then we have y as the upper. So this would be y upper minus y0, or yb, if you want to call it. And it can also be, since it's linear, we're working with this. We said we have special cases, or this is a special case when it's linear. That's where most of our work is going to be. We can take any two velocities and take the difference in distance between them. For example, we can take v upper minus v2 divided by y upper. So the distance between v upper and this, which is basically u upper minus y, we call it 3 over there. So there's a slight difference. Oh, we didn't actually even define that. So y4. I'm going to put it as y4. So it's this velocity change divided by this distance. Or we can take actually this velocity change by this distance. So it's the change of velocity over a certain distance. And next, before we do this example, I don't have space, so I'm going to actually write it here. We have also something Sometimes we need it. It's called the kinematic viscosity. And it has the letter mu. 
and it's actually defined as mu right mu divided by rho so that's the dynamic viscosity divided by the density and it's called kinematic because it's its units are in meter squared per second so it's meter times meter per second so there's a velocity times distance or we can just think because it has uh, a second here so it's per second so there's some kind of motion in it or in English units uh, it might be in foot square per second we'll see how uh, important this term is in later slides or discussions and that's actually all what I need to cover here uh, so what's remaining is uh, solving some examples for you so I'm going to solve problem 1.74 1 in your textbook where we have uh, a parallel plate which is in figure 1.5 but in general it is the same parallel plate that we have discussed in the previous slide so the distance is 2 millimeters when the distance is 2 millimeters a shearing so it can be any distance as we've said so it's not meant to be just the top plate but when the distance is 2 millimeters a shearing stress of so this distance we have tau equals 100 50 pascals when it's pulled at the velocity of so this velocity right here velocity equals 1 meters per second determine the viscosity or we didn't say so we're gonna determine mu since they didn't say what the fluid and they didn't give us the density so the only viscosity that we can find is the dynamic viscosity Determine the viscosity of the fluid between the plates. Express your answers in SI units. So we have to work with SI units. And let's make here a general statement. Whenever I give you the problem in SI, so solve it in SI. Whenever I give it to you in English units, so you have to solve it in English units. So don't try to convert from English to SI because you like to work in SI because uh, you like the exotic or during the conversion and also I have my answers in SI otherwise you know, there is no reason for you to to convert okay so we only have a, this expression or law which is the shearing stress is equal to mu times dv by dy or the distance now this velocity is 1 here and this velocity as we've said is going to be equal to 0 so this one is 1 meter per second and this distance right here is 2 millimeters so and the, the shear is one, 150 and we need to find mu out of that equation so it's mu divided by du by dy so we have 150 pascal is newton per meter squared divided by the change in velocity which is 1 minus 0 divided by since this one is in meter meter squared so we have to substitute our distance in, in, in meter as well so it's 2 divided by a thousand What do we get? 2 times 150 is 300, then divide by 1000, so it's going to be 0 0.3. 
this distance is meter per second and this one is a meter so they cancel each other and then what we're left is Newton we have the second it goes there and then per meter squared so that's our dynamic or that's the fluid dynamic viscosity now if I ask you to find the kinematic viscosity that's actually mu overall so we're going to need the density in order to evaluate that and to substitute this value right here okay so we're done with this example we're going to move to the other example let's check the time So we have this sled and it's sliding on a thin horizontal layer of water between the ice and the runners and the horizontal force that the water puts on the runners is equal to 1.2 pounds and we need to find the thickness of water layer under the runners. If you need to read it more carefully just pause the video and read it before we start before we start the solution here okay so we need to find this small thickness right here So we need to find this distance right here. So if you want to look into it right here, sorry, I have to turn the phones off. So this one is sliding, that's the sliding at a velocity of 50 feet per second. This one is the snow here, we need to determine this distance D. The total area of both runners in contact is, so both are 0 0.08 foot square, that's area here with the snow and this one so we have them both here that's the velocity and that's the force at 1.2 pounds and we have the viscosity since we didn't mention but we can check the units that's the actually the dynamic viscosity 3.5 times 10 negative 5 and second per foot square. Determine the thickness of the water. Assume a linear, so that's a really good, important assumption for us. If it wasn't, then we can't actually use, we will see, we can use probably now because the velocity here is like this and the velocity here is like that. So we need to make that assumption in order to use the general term, which is the big velocity change of the same distance d. So we know that tau is equal to mu change in velocity by change in distance or that's going to be mu times what? The velocity is 50 minus 0 dividing on that feet per second divided right by d. The problem is we don't have tau here, right? But we do have the force exerted by both runners here and here, or by the total system. So that's going to be F divided by the total area of both 
it was just one, then you have to say two. But since they gave you the area as, so it's F by A, so it's uh, the And that's going to be 1.2 divided by, what's the area here, 0 0.08. So, it's, it's, uh, so if you rearrange your equation, mu is going to be, uh, sorry, d, we're looking for d. equal to mu times v, so that's v minus 0, so mu times v divided times a divided by f, and that's going to be the viscosity, which is 3.5 times 10 negative 5 pound second per foot square, into the velocity 50 feet per second into the area 0 0.08 foot square dividing, divided by 1.2 pounds so this with this would go second with this second would go foot square with this foot square would go and then what's left is this unit right here, feet, and that's our distance. If you do the calculation, you should get almost 11.7 times 10 negative 4 feet. So that's the distance. Okay, and the final example, which I would like to work on, is A common example that you'll find for mechanical and mechanical engineering applications uh, where you have some kind of rotating things and in this example what we have on this problem we have a piston having a diameter of 5.48 so that's our diameter 5.48 inch and a length of 9.5 inch the it slides downward with a velocity v through a vertical pipe. So you have the pipe, and then you have the piston inside it sliding down. Sorry, it's not very straight. We have velocity v. The downward motion is resistant is resisted by an oil film between the piston and the pipe wall. So we have some kind of oil that's here and here. And it's resisting this sliding motion of the piston inside the film. The film thickness right here is 0 0.002 inches. And the cylinder weight, this has a weight W equals 2.5. Yeah. Estimate the velocity v if the oil viscosity, so we have mu equals to 0.016 pound second per foot square. Assume the velocity distribution in the gap is linear so that we can make that assumption again. But now let's look into this example whether before we start just solving blindly without thinking what's happening. This one is cylindrical, okay? And the pipe is cylindrical too. So that's the piston. So you have the oil here in between those two. This thickness is 0 0.002 inches. And it's the one that's resisting the
motion of the piston. Now the velocity here, right here at the tip, that's the velocity of the piston. It's v, and it diminishes to zero. So it's like this. So that's v, that's zero, and that's delta, which is 0.002 inches. Okay. Now, if you want to do it here, it's still v here and zero here. Same here. The velocity here is zero. Is v, sorry, and here it's zero. So we're gonna take this small portion, which is this, right there, and then we can apply tau equals mu dv by dy, which is essentially going to be mu v minus zero divided by delta. We do have mu here. We have the velocity. Or uh, they want us to find actually the velocity v. Is it equal to if delta is this much? Okay. So the question back to the previous example, what's tau? How can we find this shear stress tau? So we would go back to the definitions of the pressure or the uh, what we have learned in strength of material and dynamics. And that's actually force by area. Now, what's what's driving the force here? It's this way. Okay, so the force in this case is actually the weight divided by the area. Okay, so now the question is, what's the area? So since this one is cylindrical, the piston is cylindrical, and this area, all of it, is going to be the shearing area. So the area is actually by D L, not H. So now we have everything set so that we can calculate our velocity v it's w times delta divided by mu times a and the weight is let's see let's write here so that we have enough space to substitute this thing 0.5 pounds times 0.002 inch divided by the viscosity 0.016 pound second per foot square. Oops, that's a problem. We have inch and feet here. And the area is actually pi times 5. 0.48 inches so this inch would cancel with this inch but we have here feet square so we have to substitute this one at one of them in, in feet which is 9.5 inch so I'm going to divide this to be in feet okay, so 12 inch per feet so what would happen here is this let's cover it so that you let's change the color to red so this inch would cancel with this inch and then the pound here so that color with this one. This pound will cancel with this pound and it's between the second will stay. So all that we have now is this inch will go with this inch and then this feet will cancel the square of this feet. Then we have feet 
per second left. So now we packed our clear calculators, you can do the calculation and you should get if I'm not wrong with my calculations 4.59 times 10 negative 3 feet per second which can be 0.055 inch per second uh, one foot is almost 12 inches and before we wrap up this chapter I'd like to introduce the concept of compressibility we have uh, because as we've said we have uh, liquids and gases now most gases are compressible most are compressible but what about liquids are they compressible or not and if they can be compressed a little bit how do we consider them? That's actually the next slide. How we might consider them as compressible liquids or simply non-compressible. So the way they have defined, and again, this part is not required from you for like exams, but we do need to check on the compressibility of water for example because our derivations are going to be for incompressible fluids so it's defined the compressibility that's called EV the compressibility factor is defined as the change in pressure divided by the change in volume with respect to the initial volume so that's the initial volume and then it was decreased by this much so this change divided by the whole volume due to the change in pressure this would be called the compressibility factor if dv Let me just uh, double check that because it has to be almost 5%. Let's make a general statement and then we put numbers. If dv with respect to v is too small with or under A high pressure then it is incompressible and in general if dv by dp Sorry, dv by v over dp is less than 5%. So if the change of the volume with respect to uh, the initial volume compared to how much pressure you're putting, if it's less than 5%, so we can assume that this statement is correct. So it's too small. It's a very, because what's too small? Is it this much? Is it 10%? Is it 20%? So in general, if it is less than 5%, the fluid is incompressible and that actually answers our question here how can you uh, make an engineering conclusion whether a fluid is compressible or not so in general it's related to how much pressure you put and how much you get for the change of volume with respect to the initial volume and with that, I'm going to stop here. And that actually concludes chapter one. It's basically a review of previous fluid properties.
which are mostly stuff that we have seen before, such as viscosity, a density, specific weight, gamma, a specific gravity, which might be mean for you, which is density over density of water, etc. I hope that we will solve the examples or try to understand them and ask questions if you have on Monday. Thank you.